In this video we will show how to assemble the WaveGo with Raspberry Pi kit. Before assembling the structural parts, first write the system image provided by the official Raspberry Pi to the SD card. After the card reader is connected to the computer, visit the Raspberry Pi official website to download and install the Raspberry Pi imager. Run Raspberry Pi imager, select the operating system at the top, Raspberry Pi OS. Choose your SD card. Make sure not to make a mistake in this step. The writing process of the image will delete all the contents of the SD card. Click right to start downloading and writing the image file. This process may last for more than 10 minutes. At the same time, you can prepare the files you will need later to enable the Raspberry Pi's SSH service and automatically connect to Wi-Fi. Create a new SSH.txt file, delete the extension. Text. Create a new WPA underscore supplicant.txt file, write the content as shown in the figure, replace the country, Wi-Fi name and password with your own, and save it. Change the extension of this file to Conference. After the system image is written, the system may prompt you whether to format the SD card due to the different file system. Click Cancel. The Raspberry Pi imager will automatically eject the SD card. You can close it and reconnect the card reader. Copy the two files created before to the SD card, and then eject the SD card. Remove the card reader and insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Power on the Raspberry Pi, and it will automatically connect to your Wi-Fi hotspot. Search for Advanced IP Scanner, download and install it. You can also use other method to get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Run Advanced IP Scanner. Click the scan button to scan the IP addresses. Find the IP address with the word Raspberry Pi in the name or manufacturer, and remember it. Press the Win key and the R key at the same time, input CMD, and press Enter to open the command line. Linux or Mac OS users can open terminal. Log into the Raspberry Pi via SSH, enter SSH, space, Pi in and the Raspberry Pi IP address noted. Press Enter, input the default password Raspberry. It is normal that there is no change on the screen when entering the password. After entering the password, press the Enter key to access the Raspberry Pi. Download the WaveGo project from GitHub. Type sudo git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash waveshare slash wavego.git. Press enter to start the download. Next run the wavego setup script. sudo python 3 wavego slash repi slash setup.py. Depending on the local network environment, this process may take some time. After the installation is complete, the window will display completed. The Raspberry Pi will automatically restart. Since the Raspberry Pi is not connected to camera, the WaveGo program will not run, just unplug the power. First, assemble the servo units. Note that the left and right parts in the picture are different. Insert the arm into the groove. Before installing the arm to the gear of the servo, you need to control the servo to rotate to the specified position. In order to protect the circuit, you need to press the boot button to power on for the first time after installing the batteries. After powering on, use the DuPont cable to connect the G12 to the 3.3 volts of the multifunction expansion interface, and the servo will rotate to the specified position after connecting the wire. Connect a servo to any servo port. The color of the servo wire may be different due to different batches of servos. Connect the servo to the board according to the color of the wire. Install the arm to the gear of the servo according to the marked angle. Take an M2x5 screw to fix the arm and the servo together. Take 4 M2 by 5 screws to assemble the other two servos. The servo wire needs to pass through the upper part of the unit, like this. After the screw is tightened, do not tighten it more, otherwise the thread form during the screwing process will be damaged. In this way, we assemble one servo unit, and then assemble the other in the same way. Then we will assemble the remaining two servo units. The assembly methods are similar, except that these two servo units are the mirror version of the two previously assembled. Connect a servo to any servo port. Install the arm to the gear of the servo according to the marked angle. Take an M2x5 screw to fix the arm and the servo together. Take four M2x5 screws to assemble the other two servos. In this way, we assemble one servo unit, and then assemble the other in the same way. Now, all four servo units are assembled. Next, assemble the leg links, which are also the same in pairs. First install the flange bearing. 
Note that the installation directions of the two bearings are opposite. If the bearing cannot be inserted, you can press it hard. The leg structure is made of nylon, which has a relatively high toughness. The two flange bearings on the small linkage are in the same direction. Each joint of the leg consists of two flange bearings and one flat bearing. Flange bearings are used to share the radial force of the joints. This is the case after the flange bearing is installed. Install one flange bearing on this part. Two of these components are required for one leg. Be careful not to lose parts when unpacking the flat bearing. Insert a KM3 by 16 screw into the flange bearing, so that the parts of flat bearing is not easy to fall off. Finally, use the M3 lock nut to fix this joint. Be careful not to tighten the lock nut too tight, otherwise it will hinder the joint rotation. The same is true for other joints, insert a long screw into the flange bearing and then install other components. When installing the M3 lock nut, you can first use a cross wrench and a screwdriver to tighten the lock nut, and then loosen it appropriately so that the joint can rotate without shaking too much. After assembly, all joints can rotate smoothly, and you need to pay attention to the tightness of the joints from time to time during future use. Assemble another set of leg links in the same way. The assembly method of the next two groups of leg links is similar to the previous two groups. First install the flange bearing. Install one flange bearing on this part. This is the case after the flange bearing is installed. Two of these components are required for one leg. The same is true for other joints, insert a long screw into the flange bearing and then install other components. When installing the M3 lock nut, you can first use a cross wrench and a screwdriver to tighten the lock nut, and then loosen it appropriately so that the joint can rotate without shaking too much. After assembly, all joints can rotate smoothly, and you need to pay attention to the tightness of the joints from time to time during future use. Assemble another set of leg links in the same way. In this way, the four sets of leg links are assembled. Next, assemble the body and use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to fix the nylon column to the drive board on the side of the batteries. Remove the sticker on the buzzer. Place the servo units as shown in the frame. Connect the servo shown in the frame to the drive board. The wiring of the servo is regular, and the farthest servo is connected to the port closest to the edge. The corresponding number is also marked next to the servo port, so you can wire according to the number. First place the servo units as shown in the picture. Check for wiring errors based on the position of each servo and its port number. Peel off the sticker on the buzzer. Next, arrange the servo wires. Pass the wires of the two servos in the swing group through the gap between the battery box and the nylon standoffs as shown in the video. Use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to install the bottom cover. Note that the shorter side is the front, and the longer side is the end side. Fix the bottom cover on the nylon standoffs, be careful not to break the servo wire during this process. Install the side panel after the bottom cover is fixed. Press the servos into the side panels like this, then use M2 by 8 nylon screws and M2 nylon nuts to fasten the servos to the side panels. Put the nylon nut into the small hole on the side panel first, and then screw in the nylon screw. Each servo unit needs to be fixed with two nylon screws and two nylon nuts. After the two servo units are fixed, Arrange the servo wires. Route the wires of the servos directly connected to the side panels through the gap between the battery box and the nylon post as shown in the video. Then use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to fasten one of the side panels to the bottom panel. Note that only one side panel is installed here. If both sides are installed, the upper panel will not be installed. Next use the same method to assemble the other two servo units. Do not install this side panel to the bottom panel for the time being after the servo units are assembled. To install the antenna, first pass the cable of the antenna base through the gap at the top of the head. Then install the antenna base. Since the mounting hole is not a complete circle, pay attention to the installation direction of the antenna base. Finally install the antenna to fix the antenna base. Installed as shown in the figure. 
Connect the wire of the OLED screen. Connect the cable of the antenna base. Pass the wire of the OLED screen through the holes in the upper panel. Then insert the top panel into the side panel. Use short copper standoffs to fix the top panel to the side panels. Arrange the servo wires. Route the wires of the servos directly connected to the side panels through the gap between the battery box and the nylon standoffs as shown in the video. Then use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to secure the side panel to the bottom panel. Use short copper standoffs to secure the side panel to the top panel. The assembled body is shown in the figure. Next, assemble the camera. Use M2 by 3 screws to fix the camera on the nylon parts. Be careful not to re-tighten the screws after tightening them, so as not to damage the threads formed in the process of screwing the screws. Pull out the black plastic tab on the cable connector. Connect the camera cable, pay attention to the connection direction. Then press the black plastic back in, pass the other end of the cable through the hole on the bottom of the camera. Then pass the cable through the hole under the head. You can use a screwdriver to guide the direction of the cable while pressing it in. Then mount the camera assembly to the head. There are two snaps above the camera assembly that snap into holes above the head. Pass the camera cable through the hole on the top panel. Install the flange bearing. Then install the head. Note that the circular protrusion on the head part should be aligned with the flange bearing, and then press firmly after alignment. Use KM 2.5 by 6 screws to fix the head to the body. Next install the tail. Likewise, install the flange bearing first, then align the circular protrusion on the tail with the flange bearing and press firmly. Use KM 2.5 by 6 screws to fix the tail to the body. The assembled look is shown in the figure. Connect the OLED screen and turn it on. Connect the G12 of the multifunction expansion interface to the 33 volts pin with a DuPont cable, and the device will enter the assembly mode. In this mode, all the servos on the device will be turned to the middle position of the servo angle sensor, which is used for the assembly of the servos and the arms. Install the arms of the servo according to the angle shown in the picture. After the eight arms are installed, calibrate the servos. Use your phone or computer to search for a Wi-Fi hotspot named Waveshare Robot. To connect this Wi-Fi, the password is 12345678901. It is recommended to use the Chrome browser to access 192.168.4.1 and open the web control page of the device. Use the PWM button and set button to calibrate the servos. Continuously pressing PWM button can be used to control a servo to slowly rotate to the specified position and then press the set key to save this position. Once the servo is calibrated correctly, it does not need to be recalibrated in subsequent use, even if the program is re-uploaded, it can be permanently saved. If the calibration is not correct, calibrate the servo that needs to be calibrated again. Control the arms to rotate to the angle as shown in the figure, and then press the set key to save. All servos require calibration before use. Be careful not to lose the arms of the servos during the process, otherwise you need to repeat the whole operation of connecting the DuPont cable and arms. After all the servos are calibrated, remove the DuPont cable and turn off the power. Next install the legs. Lay out the leg units as shown, and then assemble it in this direction. Use M2 by 5 screws to fix the leg assembly to the body. A simple test can be performed after the four legs are assembled. After the device is powered on, use your mobile phone to connect to the hotspot established by WaveGo. It is recommended to use Google Chrome to access 192.168.4.1. Then press forward, backward, left, right to observe whether the device is running normally. If it doesn't work properly, remove the leg assembly and recalibrate the servos, or check the wiring again. If it works, Turn off the device and prepare to assemble the Raspberry Pi kit. Use KM3 by 16 screws and M3 nuts to fasten the fan to the Raspberry Pi case. Use CM3 by 8 screws and M3 nuts to fasten the OLED screen to the Raspberry Pi case. Attach the double-sided tape to both sides of the acrylic cover to install the cover. 
connect the DuPont wires as shown. The Raspberry Pi and the ESP32 use serial communication. Be careful not to connect wrongly. Use the long copper standoffs to secure the Raspberry Pi. Connect the wires of the cooling fan. Connect the camera cable, pay attention to the cable direction. Use KM 2.5 x 6 screws to install the Raspberry Pi case. This completes the assembly of the WaveGo with the Raspberry Pi kit. After the device is powered on, you can access the Raspberry Pi's web control by accessing the Raspberry Pi's IP address and adding 5000. For more information about WaveGo, please refer to our API documentation and WaveGo secondary development tutorial.